Hey, this is Arnav from Scalab. Welcome to yet another episode of Refactor. And today we are going to be talking about the software engineering career ladder in large tech companies. So everybody goes into a large tech company at an entry level role, which is called a uh, software development engineer one or SD one. Usually uh, some companies like Google call it SWE one uh, as well. Uh, but then what happens afterwards? Like what are the different roles that you can keep on growing into? And uh, it does not only go up vertically, but also there are some different uh, departments that you can go into, which is like product management, engineering management. So what are all of these? We will talk today in this video. Okay, so let's talk about the different uh, parts of the ladder that exist. Now, generally in engineering, in, in terms of engineering, there are a lot of different things that people can do. But what the general sense of engineering is that as a software engineer, you go in, you get some tasks you where you build uh, maybe a backend or maybe you're building an app or maybe building a website. So as a general software development engineer, uh, where you are getting tasks, building it, writing code yourself every day, that kind of a role is called an IC role. IC stands for an individual contributor. But as you keep growing, uh, you also have another ladder available to you, which is called the engineering management ladder. Now, obviously, people don't generally get started with their careers in the engineering management ladder, and the engineering management ladder does not really start at a zero years of experience level. So even the first level of the engineering management ladder starts only for people who already have a little bit of experience. But there is going to be a time that comes in your engineering career where you can continue on the IC ladder continue to keep on growing as an individual contributor where you will keep on taking up more and more challenging work and doing it yourself. Or you can switch over to the engineering management ladder where you manage engineering teams. So there will be other engineers reporting to you and your responsibility would be to enable those teams. There is also a third ladder which because of the product company and the startups have become uh, much more popular in the current times, which is called the product management ladder. Now, when you're a product manager, then you don't manage people, but you manage the product itself. So you get to decide uh, what the software is going to look like, what the users want, how the design is going to be looking like, all of those things you are going to be owning. Now, it's a very simple definition of all these three ladders, but it puts into perspective that what are broadly the three types of tech roles. Everybody usually in, in the tech companies, they start off on the IC ladder. They enter as a software development engineer. And as they grow, sometimes some people choose to continue on this. Some people go into the engineering management ladder. Some people get into the product management ladder. By the way, people can come into the product management ladder without having done uh, an IC engineering role as well. So let's look at the different levels that first of all exist inside the IC ladder. Okay. So... In the IC ladder, uh, the roles, if we just go ahead and take a look at the names of the roles uh, as such, you would see that larger the companies generally each of these roles have further divisions as well, but you'd have a software development engineer one, SDE one kind of role, which is where people start their careers from straight out of college. Once they have spent some time in this role, the next sort of IC role is a SDE two role. And these roles are generally numbered because it's just basic seniority that you have spent some time as an SDE one or an SDE two. And I will talk about the roles and responsibilities. If, if the companies are really bigger, they might have SDE three kind of roles as well. But uh, in most other mid-sized companies after an SDE two, you become a senior software engineer. Okay. And after senior software engineer, the names of the roles are slightly different. There's something called a staff software engineer. We'll talk about that as well. And then usually the most senior people in the IC ladder, they have names like lead engineer or principal engineer. So let's discuss what are the roles and responsibilities. Now for a SD one kind of a level, you would be mostly given technical specs that this is what you have to build. This is an API. If you hit this API, this is the data that you will get or in an app, this is a screen that you have to make and you are given very detailed description and you have to write the code to implement that. That's how you start off with. When you become an SD2, that is after spending a few years as an SD1, that is where you are able to translate product requirements into technical requirements. So let's say a product manager or somebody who is responsible for, let's say an app says that clicking on this button makes a user sign up. So you are the one who then decides that, okay, sign up means that I have to send a post request with the user's data and that will result in on the server, the user getting authenticated. These technical requirements, you have to actually uh, create those requirements based on what the product requirement was. And those details might not be always given to you in a clear terms and you are responsible for them. After that, of course, you grow into a senior software engineer. And when we talk about a senior software engineer, what the expectation of the industry is, like generally people talk like when we are hiring engineers, are you hiring 
software engineers or are you hiring senior software engineers? When you take a senior software uh, engineer in those terms, what it generally means is that this person would be able to design the architecture of a feature, which means that where the data is going to be stored, state management if we are doing, uh, right? What are the basic security principles that are getting applied onto this, right? And all of these requirements, the senior software engineer is usually both cognizant of and they're responsible for and they own that. And generally, if let's say somebody from who, who owns the business or the product, they are giving a task to a senior software engineer, they consider that this person would be responsible for making it secure, making sure that the performance is uh, good, it will scale to the number of users that is required. So you can entrust a technical responsibility to a senior software engineer and not have to you know, wonder whether they will be able to deliver the technical results in time or not. And as a senior software engineer, another additional responsibility that usually comes uh, along with it is you have to now mentor the SD1, SD2 uh, people in your team as well, because they are coming in fresh from college, joining the team, and you have to mentor them so that they grow into the similar position that you are in today, right? Now, after senior software engineer, if people keep on continuing to grow inside the IC ladder, generally the next sort of role in large companies is called something called a staff software engineer. Now, why is it called staff? Because this is a terminology that comes from uh, the way back days in terms of army and all that there were people who are line uh, in the army would say it's a line uh, sergeant and it's a staff sergeant, these kind of differentiation used to happen. And even after that, in factories, like in auto car manufacturers and factory floors, you would have okay line engineer and a staff engineer. What it generally means is that a line engineer does very, uh, you know, day to day, uh, constantly changing set of uh, work, and their work is thought of in that sense is that it's a bit of a monotonous work. And a staff software engineer is somebody who works on sort of the more futuristic things, they create the platforms, they build the tools that the line engineers would be using, right? So that's where the terminology actually comes from. In tech companies, what generally differentiation happens is that in most big tech companies, like if you talk at the FANG kind of companies and the big MNCs, a staff software engineering role is usually a terminal role. A terminal role means that after you become a staff software engineer, you can choose to not have more promotions. Before a staff software engineer roles, Till then, it is expected out of you that every three, four years, you grow sufficiently so that you go on to the next role. And if you don't, you're generally expected that you will leave the company that you have not been able to grow here. But a staff software engineer is thought of as a terminal role that you can get to a staff software engineer role, let's say at 10 years of experience. And for the next 20 years, you can remain as a staff software engineer and not try to have further uh, promotions or grow any further. That's, you can retire at a staff software engineer uh, role as well, okay. And that also means generally that in, in most of these big companies, staff software engineer roles generally do not have things like PIP, a performance improvement plan. They're generally not fired for performance reasons because the company trusts you with technology to take technical decisions, to run tech teams, right? And even further than a staff software engineer, generally comes a principal engineer and in very big companies like a Google or a Microsoft or Facebook, you would also have maybe distinguished software engineer or engineering fellow, these kind of names as well. But what a principal engineer means is generally a principal engineer who is working on any particular technology, like let's say somebody is working on databases. So they would usually be the authority of databases across the entire company. So anybody who wants to talk about anything in about databases, the principal software engineer is the person they would be consulting. So they are the experts in whatever field they are working. That's a principal principal software engineer. And that's the reason why there is no pressure to go from a staff software engineer to a principal. If you have that level of expertise, and usually in companies like say uh, Google, uh, you would find people who have developed a new language or developed a new framework, or they have completely built from scratch a major product, the architecture of a major product like Gmail, those kind of people would be principal software engineers. And there won't be a lot of them across the company, there would be only a handful of them. And they are usually working on those teams which needs that level of expertise and all teams might not necessarily have a principal software engineer. Okay, so that's about the IC ladder. Let's talk about where from the IC ladder you can switch to the engineering management or product management ladders. Okay, so when we talked about the IC ladder, we were uh, talking about senior software engineer, which after an SD1 and SD2 kind of level, you get into a senior software engineer. At that level, you might also opt to get into what is called people management. So when you people management, that's what the EM ladder is like. So you can become 
the first level like EM1, like we are talking about SD1, we can become the first level of an engineering manager instead of becoming a senior software engineer, right? So many companies would say that an SD3 and an EM1 are at a same level or however that leveling is done. But generally, the level of expertise at which somebody can become a senior software engineer, at that point, the company can give you a choice that, hey, would you like to do something else more that you want to uh, make sure that the timelines of your tech team are managed properly. You want to take care of hiring new people in the team. You want to look at the sort of uh, growth needs of the other engineers in your team, mentor them. These are the things you want to do more than take decisions about what the architecture of the software will look like, what the high level design of the software would uh, be. So you want to do this more, right? Then you can get into engineering management. Now engineering management is also a hardcore tech role, by the way. It does not mean that people who are in the engineering management ladder do not have to or need to keep on growing in terms of technical expertise. That's not the case, but people start reporting to you. Now in bigger companies, what happens is if you are in an IC role, people generally do not report to you. So you're not uh, responsible for handling payroll, handling leaves, making sure of your team's morale. These things are not an IC engineer's responsibilities. But as an EM, these responsibilities start. So usually as a entry level engineering manager, generally three to five people would be reporting to you. Uh, you would be responsible for making sure that the task that they have been given get delivered in time. And if it does not, then you need to be able to apprise other stakeholders like the product managers, the business owners that, okay, there's a delay in the timeline. It has happened because of so and so reasons. You are responsible for the you know well-being of your team as well. And here the growth looks like generally more and more responsibilities in terms of people management grow. As a senior engineering manager, generally you are responsible for a larger team. You are also responsible for handling the budgets of that team. After a senior engineering manager, generally there is a role called director of engineering. Usually a director of engineering is responsible for the entire engineering uh, responsibilities of a, usually a large scale product or an entire division of the company. Let's say, for example, you take a company like Google. Google makes so many products. There's from Gmail to YouTube to, you know, so many things. And even within Gmail, there would be, okay, there's writing an email itself would be such a big feature for them. There's so many, uh, you know, components inside that. Uh, how the inbox is categorized, that might be a thing. So there can be a director of engineering for each large feature. And they are responsible for uh, maintaining headcount, like how many engineers we need to keep on building this uh, project, allocating budgets for that feature, making sure that product managers are available to you know uh, keep driving the roadmap of the uh, project, how the engineers in their team are going to keep growing, handle everything like from payroll, compensation, all of that stuff a director of engineering does. Okay. And beyond generally a director of engineering, you get into executive roles, which is people who, who sort of uh, look after the uh, entire roadmap of the company. That's usually a VP engineering role. VP of engineering is generally like somebody who is uh, responsible for the entire tech of a whole division, maybe a subdivision inside the company. And they usually report to the board or to the CTO, uh, these kind of roles. Now let's talk about the third uh, thing. And obviously product management can make for a whole video. So I will just brush upon certain things. So what happens is a lot of people after spending a few years in engineering also want to move into product management. Now, while I don't want to get uh, too much into detail of what product management is because that's a vast topic, but I want to talk about what it isn't. So as a product manager, your responsibilities of actually writing code go down to almost zero generally because of so many other responsibilities that come in. And as a product manager, you are not responsible for people reporting to you. You are not responsible for teams. You are not responsible for people, but you're responsible for the product itself. Now here, the responsibility uh, looks different in the sense that you have to go out and talk to the users and understand what their needs are. You have to go and talk to the business owners and understand that in terms of revenues and in terms of expenditures, how much you can spend and what sort of revenues that product must bring in and what the users want. And based on that, you have to design the roadmap of the product that, okay, these features have to be built. And to build that, you will have to work with the product designers, UI, UX designers who will design the features. And then you have to work with the engineering managers and the engineers and get that thing built. So it's your responsibility that the particular product, and when I talk about a product, everything you use as software, like a movie player, like a VLC to a browser, like Firefox, all of these are products. And as you would have seen last five to 10 years, 
new and new features have kept getting added to them, which you have loved. And that's why you continue to use that. And, you know, you think that, okay, this product should have this more feature as well, which would make my life even easier. And that gets added as a product manager, you're responsible for those things. Um, a product manager's uh, roadmap generally looks like, you know, their responsibility of generally as a initially a level one product manager would be responsible for a feature within, within a, a product. A senior product manager might be responsible for an entire set of functionalities or they might be responsible for an entire app or an entire website. And then after senior product manager, you generally have a role which is called a group product manager. A group product manager is usually responsible for a business line. So for example, let's say Google might have a group product manager who looks after everything in terms of payments. So Google Pay, Google Wallet. Maybe there's a group product manager who looks after everything in email. So Gmail, Hangouts, Meet, all of that stuff, right? Group product managers have product managers reporting to them and they orchestrate the entire direction of a whole product line. And Again, just like the engineering management role, they would be reporting onto executive level VP of products who would then be reporting further to somebody like a CEO or a CTO uh, kind of a role. So that's how these ladders look like. And once you have spent a few years as a software engineer and then as an SDE too, then you have to take a pick on which direction your career is supposed to take. So hopefully this gives you a bit of a broad overview around what the roles and responsibilities are and which one you love. If you want us to, you know, cover more topics like this, definitely uh, like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. We are going to be covering more such topics in the near future as well. Thank you so much.